All right, welcome back everybody to the Power Stroke Tech Talk podcast. This is number 13, and we have uh, two newcomers today, uh, accompanied by DS on the top left and Ryan at the bottom. We have John here in the middle, next to Mark, and um, we're here, we're gonna talk for trucks. Um, if you haven't already, uh, make sure to hit my email above my head if you want to get on the podcast and talk trucks, talk about your truck, uh, talk about things that are bothering you about your truck. Maybe you had a dealership experience that you weren't happy about, and maybe you want to get some off your chest. Maybe you want to talk about something that Ford should implement onto their Super Duty, and this would be the start of how all that stuff happens. We brainstorm, we talk, we figure things out, and we ask questions. So um, we don't know anything about John. We're going to talk about uh, him for a couple minutes, see what kind of rig he's got, what he does. And uh, yeah, what's up, buddy? Not much. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Heck yeah, man. Thanks for joining. Thanks Thank for you. coming. I appreciate it. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I um. I got a 2020 F-150 Lariat uh, for my personal vehicle. Um, I tow with it. It's a max tow 3.5. Oh, heck um, yeah. You know, it's, to me, it's probably the nicest, most luxurious truck that will actually tow something pretty significant if you need to once in a while. And the reason I went that route was uh, I have another truck. I got an older GMC with a big block in it. It's an 8.1. I've oh, had that yeah. truck for 15 years. 8.1 Allison. A truck is just a workhorse. It Feed does, me. It does. Yep. It doesn't pass a gas station. Without stopping, <laughs> but that truck has been an anvil of reliability for me. Um, in 15 years, I, I, it's never broke down on me. I, I should knock on wood, right? Um, I had one windshield wiper arm pop off the transmission because my driver didn't get out and clean the windshield. And it was so bad, it popped off the pasture side. That, that's it. The truck's been great other than that. Just maintenance and normal repairs. You know, <laughs> so I've done the exhaust manhole gaskets like three times, you know. Wow. But, uh, that's typical for something I've had 15 years. It works in assault. <laughs> right. But the, yeah, but I use that truck to tow my dump trailer. I have a small landscape business. I have a skid steer. I've got a vent track. Um, and I've got a couple of those small things. I've got an enclosed trailer that carries mowers. And the beauty of the F-150 is that if, if that truck's either down or I'm using it for something else, I can throw my F-150 right on the 7 by 14 dump trailer. Even if it's pretty well loaded, it'll do it. You know, and oh, I can do it safely. That's um, cool. My skid steer weighs 8,000 pounds. I got an aluminum trailer that weighs 2,000 pounds. Not a problem for the Ford. That's and, awesome. That's funny you say okay. safety because a lot of people, when they have a vehicle that is equipped or says max tow, yeah, they're going max tow. And it's no, not, I, yeah, you're you right. know all about yes, that it's it's being safe and you know how ds Absolutely. has uh, his setup and and ryan with all his work trucks it's you know the vehicle's supposed to be looking straight ahead not pointing at no, the tops no. of the trees you know and you're sitting you know just just floating so yeah i, <laughs> I actually took my weight distributing hitch for my camper and set it up for the dump trailer awesome because it, it gets up over twelve thousand pounds sometimes and yet you know if i had a super duty i wouldn't care but with a 150 you want to move that weight forward Hell yeah, yeah, it makes a huge difference, you know. It does, you know. It Most makes definitely. a big. And I only go. I'm going four miles with the yeah. truck. I'm going from a friend's house to mine. It's four miles, but you know, it just keeps the truck so planted and stable. It's just yeah. way, better, way better for the truck. What you know, the, if you don't what, do that, I didn't take it to a scale, but that rear axle will be way over without doing that. So, yeah. what um, uh, what color is your rig? Uh, this this one is um, I want to say it's called. No, it's um, rapid red metallic. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. It replaced Ruby red. My last one was Ruby red. I got you. <clears throat> this is a little bit brighter than the uh, Ruby red, but uh, I've grown to love it. I, I, I like the Ruby red better than I had it in my other truck, but this truck is, um, it's, it's gorgeous. I've had compliments in this truck too. Why'd you switch them out? The trucks. Only reason, honestly, I went because the Ford dealer gave me such a good deal on my trade. I ended up losing. My old truck was 51,000 and change on the sticker. I think I paid 43 for the truck. 
and I think I lost six thousand dollars almost three years. You know what wow. I mean? It was because of COVID and the lack of trades, and my <clears> truck was really clean. I'll be honest, it was like brand new, and I took super care of it. I had all maintenance records, and the only reason I traded it is because I got the truck and realized I should have probably bought a Lariat when I got it, and I wanted to add some things to it. I'm not saying I couldn't have added them because I'm always up for the challenge, but it just wasn't worth it. Yeah. At the time, you add the motor headlights to make the LED headlights to make it nice, because any bulb you put in the stock housing, it just doesn't work right. I tried a couple different ones. By the time you add that, you add the cluster. I add the heat, heated steering wheel I really wanted, and a couple of things. Yeah. And the trade-in number they gave me, it just made sense. And my yeah. new truck I purchased from a different dealer, and not because the old dealer was gave me a problem. They were actually very good. But the dealership I bought the 20 from offer a lifetime powertrain warranty to the original owner. And that, I don't know how long I'm going to have this truck. I could have it three years. I could have it 13 years. But that kind of went a long way for me, you know, um, especially the 10 speed and the 3.5. I, I take very good care of stuff, but I know powertrain stuff can get expensive. You know? How do you like the 10 speed in, in, in your, your real world opinion? I think the 10 speed... I think you have to drive it consistent. If you drive it the same all the time, it's great. But if you tow one day and then don't the next, or you're driving for miles per gallon for a day or two, then all of a sudden your foot's in it, it gets confused and it takes time to adjust. But if you drive it pretty consistent, I think it's good. I agree. I agree with that. The three, four shift is clunky when that it's makes, cold. That makes sense. Um, I've had a clunky seven, eight shift and I've had my 17 right around when I traded it in, it would get an occasional in town, 30, 35 mile an hour. The converter clutch would come in and it would get a quick shutter. And I explained in detail to the dealer exactly what it was doing. I personally, with my experience, I felt they needed the transmission service. That's what it felt like to me. Or an additive package. Like the converter was just starting to shutter a little bit. And it was only like once a month. My brother borrowed my truck. He thought it was a misfire. But I pulled the codes. There's no misfire codes or nothing. Really? And um, I had it happen to me a couple weeks after he borrowed it. And it felt like a converter shutter to me. But that's wow. it. And um, I do notice that when you're towing... The transmission comes into its own. It's just phenomenal towing. I mean, when you've got a load awesome. behind that truck. Yeah. And I got to tell you, my last truck was a Duramax. It was an 04. It had a tow tune in it. So it wasn't the newer ones that are powerful. It was a 300 horse, 520. But it had a, it had a 50 horse tow tune in it. This EcoBoost, I pulled that truck all day long. Oh, yeah. Wow. And I pulled my big block. I've got my big block tuned. Wow. I've got a throttle body spacer on. i got a 180 thermostat. I got the plugs gap down. If you don't think about the 8.1, they like 45,000 plug gap. And I've got Flowmaster exhaust. That EcoBoost will not pull that 8.1 anytime. What uh, what do you what do you have done to it? You got you got exhaust, tints, wheels, lift, or anything? Yeah, or? On, the, on the Ford. Um, I brought the Ford over to the same place I brought my last one. They did. I did tint on the front windows, tint across the windshield. Cool. Um, I didn't. The other truck I had them ceramic coat. I didn't do any of that stuff on this truck. I had the whole front Invisibrox, the whole hood's done. I had the headlights done. I had the fogs done. I had the strip between the chrome bumper and the grill. There's a little body color oh, strip wow. there. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. I had all that done. So because we get a lot. Um, when I go to work, I get called in. I get called in in the snow. And I got to drive on the road behind salt trucks and my oh, trucks yeah. get pelted. So oh, yeah. I got all that done to it. Um, I've got a Ford um hard tunnel cover on it that was off my Damn. last truck i'm thinking about getting one that's so funny the, the last podcast yeah. we had somebody said about tunnel cover it's like man yep it's off my last truck i got that off of it and i did a little bit of four scan work with it recently oh okay okay yeah i, uh, I bought the adapter and Hell yeah. um, plugged that in and i you know what i hated about this truck hated it was the the horn honk yeah when you, when you get out with it the, the first time it happened i got in my truck at like 4 30 in the morning to go to work I hopped in it and I forgot that I didn't bring the garbage can with me. And I went to get out man, at four 30 in the morning, that horn. I know. Oh, and I live in the country on 21 acres. It is so loud. Like what the I fuck? hated that. Yeah. yeah. I got to turn mine off because I'm yeah, out following it's, snow. And it's like yep. 2 AM. It's Hong Kong. Yep. You know what else I hated too? I hated, hated that piped in V8 sound they put on it on the Lariat. You don't like I, that? Oh, I hate it. I actually so like I, that. I had, like XLT. I had my XLT. I had my XLT for almost three years and I didn't have it. So I was used to the sound of the engine. And I, I don't dislike the sound of the engine. Um, this piped in, this Larry is so nice and refined. And I don't really like loud. I don't, I don't want to hear the engine. I just, I work on them all day long. I listen to big trucks and I listen to right, right. 
I listen to, you know, you know, air dryer sneeze all day long. I don't want to hear it. I just don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. I turn, I turn that off. I put the con controls for the um, heating steering wheel and seat on the screen. How did you, when you added the steering wheel, did you have to add the module too? Or no, I didn't add a steering wheel. I added it by buying a lariat. Oh, oh, I see, I see. Okay, okay. I, <laughs> I added the controls like, no to way. the. I added the controls to the cluster through Forescan. Hmm. So on your on the home screen on your on your system, you've got a little cube of your navigation. You've yeah. got your radio station, and on the bottom now you've got the heated steering wheel icon and the the seat icons for heated and cooled seats. Hmm. That's what I did. I wonder how much more work it is it to actually add the full heated steering wheel. I don't know. I watched so many videos and did so much research, and I almost did it to my other truck. And yeah, there was I'd two like ways to, to go around it. There was one company had done it just by robbing power from something and putting it on a switch. Another person, like you said, added the module and some wiring. Had to I make would definitely like to do that. That'd be so cool just to be a, a toll forward add on. Yeah. I mean, it'd be a little pricey buying the steering wheel, but. I mean, isn't your truck loaded? Don't you have it? Yeah. No, I don't have that. What what trim level do you have? Uh, the Lariat. Why don't you Lariat Ultimate. It? I don't know. I, I didn't get heated the steering. Didn't come. Didn't come with it. The Did you order? Duties, Did you order? No, it? it was on the lot. The Super wow. Duties are a little different with their packaging, whereas the one fifties yeah. they will give it to you. But with the Super Duties, it's like for whatever reason, you got to step up to another higher level. Yeah, I noticed that. I was looking at. A little different. I almost bought a Super Duty. I was so close to pulling the trigger on a three fifty single wheel. Hell yeah. Um, I'd still love to get one. I'd love to replace my GMC with it because that truck's an old one. And I, I haven't found a gas engine I'd buy since my big block. And now Ford came out with it. That's the engine, you know? That's, yeah, yeah. that's the engine for me. I don't yeah. need a diesel. I don't run it hard enough. I don't run enough miles. But I want pulling power, you know? And when you yeah. put it with the 10-speed together, I mean, you know, for, for you, you're used to a 6.7. So everything else is going to feel weak. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody like me coming out of an older truck, a oh, yeah. three would be a big, you know, big, oh, step. Yeah. big game changer. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, and even a 6.2, I, that's, that's proven to be a really good engine. You know, a friend of mine has got one in a one ton 350 and it's, oh, yeah. it's really strong, you know? Oh yeah. They, they, they perform well. I mean, they're, they're work trucks. Yeah. They're, they're, they're nice. And, uh, especially if you get that 430 gear, you're yes. six two. That's, that's everything in those 6.2s. They need to turn RPM. Yep. Yeah. You know, one of the things is a little, it's a little weird to have a 430 with a, with the uh, 450 though, with the diesel. Yeah, you know what it is though. Today, today, if you look at like 20 years ago and today, the tires on today's trucks are two to four inches taller than they used to be. They just are. Right. Yeah, Across they are. The yeah, board, boys. I, I I don't. I'm 50 years old. You know, I was younger. A 245, 75, 16 was a standard tire on a three quarter and one ton. A one ton went maybe well, with 265, maybe. And before that, they had the 215. I think it was 215 80s and 235 80s. But all the trucks had shorter tires. So having a 430 gear is not a big deal when you got a 33 inch tire in the factory, you know? True. Right, right. True that. How much um, how much do you think one inch affects, you know, one inch of tire size, tire diameter? How, what kind of effect does that have on like engine RPM? Not very much. Not very much. I my my 2020, I just put Goodyear Dura tracks on it, on the stock wheels. And um, my brother ordered them in for me. And I, got, I was putting the third one on the rim on his new Snap-on machine. And I looked down and I noticed that it was the wrong size tire. Oh. The, oh. Well, the stock size on my truck was a 275-55 R20. They sent me 275-60 R20. So when I went to put the first one on, on the lift and I had to pick the truck up higher to put it on, it was on the alignment rack. I said, oh, boy. That's a, so I, that's a, that's a plus. It worked out being nice because um, yeah. they're winter tires. But let me tell you something. It's one inch taller. It's a 34 inch tire. You can feel it. Like you can tell. You can feel yeah. the difference. It's it's very yeah. noticeable. Mm -hmm. A little bit of peppiness went away, you know. Well, you, right, can, right. You can feel it. And the speedometer is off by two miles an hour now. When I use my GPS or I use Waze, if I'm doing 58 on the cluster, yep. it's actually 60. So, yeah. Wow. Well, well. Um, you can feel it. You know, you can feel it. I've got a summer set. I got a set of 22s off of, off of a uh, limited I put on for the summer. And, um, you know, they're nice, but I would, you know, about a month ago, I took my F-150 with the dump trailer loaded in my backyard. It was all soft. It's all soft in the fall, mushy. That truck pulled that dump trailer through my backyard. Like you cannot believe. I mean, Hell yeah. it'll out pull my GMC because the GMC is just heavy. It's a 7,300 pound truck with small tires. 
yeah. you know, and this Ford is a bigger truck, it's, you know, it's, it's a lighter truck with bigger tires. So the Ford floats where the other truck would sink, you know? Yep. That, yep. That oh, my, 450, my 450 would sink like a rock. <laughs> yes, it would. Yep. I know. I know it would. But that, that 450 is just an illegal all its own. It really is. That's, that's, you get in that truck. That is, that is a beautiful truck. There's nothing else like it. It's nice. I mean, I don't, I don't well, think... with the four, with the 450, it's like I put the plow on it and I got the salt in it. I don't want to take even, that plow off. You can't even tell, wanna, right? It, it's better. It just drives better because you got the weight on the front end and it's pulling yeah. it down, keeping it, it. It doesn't wander as much or anything. It's just, yeah, it calms it down a bit. It calms oh, it down. Almost definitely. Yeah. Like, Those trucks kind of, wanna... they, they need a little bit of weight, you know? Yeah. They need a little weight. If, I think if you're driving it empty, it almost needs more caster. To just oh, ride yeah. around empty. Yeah, because you turn a little bit and it goes further, right? It's just like if you're trying to go straight, it's like you feel like you're in the Flintstones a little bit. You're just constantly yeah. correct, correct, correct. But once you put the plow on it, a thousand pounds in the front, it's just driving laser straight. It feels like a 150 now. Right. Plow. Don't forget, too, when the front end goes down even an inch because of those radius arms, it actually gives you more caster. It's not oh, much, really? but it's a oh, little I bit. Didn't know that. Oh. That's why when guys level them, they have more trouble because when you level the truck, the radius arm, it actually makes your caster go more negative slightly. Oh, so it just wow. it just exaggerates any issues you're having with the caster. Oh, wow. yeah. And then we wow. get the death wobble. Yes, exactly. exactly. Why do you, you think the, that happens? Right. You just so that's why those, caster that's why those uh, levels, when you get a, enough of a level, like a bigger level, they yep. drop those. Certain kits will drop those arms yes. so that the correct caster. Right. That makes caster a lot of correction. Sense. It's a geometry correction, too, because the truck will ride harder if you don't drop the arms. Um <laughs> I worked at an alignment shop when I ran out of high school before I went to college. And um, for a couple of years, I did a lot of alignments on trucks and cars that came right from the body shop and were hit hard. And I, I learned on an old Hunter light align machine and you had an X on the wall for your caster. You had to, it's not like today, everything's different today. And I've had cars so bad, the X is, if you, it's not even on the chart on the wall, it's up in the shop and you're in the bay. <laughs> so I, I, I'm used to old school, you know, doing alignments. The new, I did use a newer machine right before I stopped working there. They got a new FMC machine and it had the green and the red lights and they all mm -hmm. lined up, you know, I learned on the Hunter light align. So I was, uh, I was state certified to be for, uh, for alignments. Nice. I like learned everything and I just never got a job. Nobody would hire me, but I yeah. knew all the technical stuff. I just didn't have any hands-on experience, but and you know that, you know, that's everything, man. Yeah. That's everything. Yep. I just passed all the state tests and all the requirements, but other than that. Yep. On the subject of tires, I like, I like uh, Daddy Diesel's tires down here. And I don't know, for all you guys who don't know, um, uh, this is a, one of my subs from Ohio. And he was in all one right. of my videos uh, for the uh, Operator yeah, Commander the region uh, for uh, 2020. And uh, if, if you want, go ahead and tell everybody what kind of, what kind of rig you got. Um, if you have not seen that video, we'll put a link in the description for that. If you don't know what OCR is. So yeah, definitely, OCR definitely, <clears throat> definitely check that video out guys. Uh, definitely something you need to have done. Operator commanded region. Um, I got a 2020 F 350 trimmer. Um, I love it. It's a nice truck. I ordered it. I ordered it as an XLT. Um, pretty much went through. It wasn't, uh, wasn't about getting it like fully loaded or anything like that for me it was more about simplicity and longevity um so it was more about the things i didn't want like i didn't i knew i didn't want a sunroof i don't i knew i didn't want uh a lot of power options i guess things like that just things that i knew i would have to fix later on down the line because i know everything breaks so that's pretty much how i did it when i built it um got a pretty good deal on it from my local dealer what color? They had no idea what I was what talking about uh, when I wanted to get the OCR turned on. So that's kind of how I ended up meeting up with, uh, with PTT. So it was, it was funny getting a good deal at that dealer going back and going for service and them having no clue. Right. <laughs> Have you uh, used it yet? Oh. <laughs> What's that, DS? Have you used the uh, operator command regen yet? All the time, yeah. Um, so, like he said, I live in Ohio. I live uh, outside of Toledo. So I will drive the Turnpike once in a while, east or head 75 south. Um, recently, I've headed north 
that's Muskegon. Visited some family and friends of mine, um, and then I visited him. On the way down, Bill Brown Ford in Livonia, shout out. Um, BillBrownFord.net. When I, yeah, when I use it, I noticed that my mileage goes down, I would say, three miles to the gallon when I watch it regen. Um, I can definitely notice it. With it being a tremor, it does come with the 35s. Um, I still get like 19.8 going like 80 mile an hour. So that's not too bad. pretty good. That's the 355. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. See, like with my 430 Especially gears, for, I'm nowhere oh, near 430 that. 430 gears. Nowhere near that. Every time you say, um, every time you say 430 gears. You got to drink. <laughs> <laughs> Matt would love it. <laughs> that's um, awesome. So, yeah, what I've, what I've noticed with the regen is when you actually, if you can do a regen before you're driving somewhere, the DPF yeah. does not fill back up until it cools off again. It's pretty pretty cool. I've also Whenever noticed I've, with mine, it goes, when it's, when it's regening, it goes by 5%. It doesn't go by single. It'll go like yeah, it goes 100, five, 95, five. 90, 85. It was really cool. It Have was really one? cool in the in the very um, um, beginning uh, podcast, maybe two or three. Uh, DS actually did a live regen yeah. on the podcast and initiated it. Was in a, 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 a parking lot, had to you know make sure the exhaust was clear, and he got out the truck, went around, and I mean we saw it right now. Like it couldn't have been better timing to do a regen right there. It was it was yeah. perfect timing. Have you done one parked yet? Timing, yeah. Have you done any parked? Not. All right. So whenever I've done them parked, I've done one uh, while plowing snow, and I got a hundred percent full. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all right, I'm parked here. I'm about to shovel this lot for like, uh, I don't know, fifteen minutes. I'm gonna do a regen, regen, and I'm gonna go shovel. So I got done shoveling, and the thing, it never for me, it never stops. Like it just keeps re, it keeps doing it keeps revving and making the heat and all that mm. it never i've never completed one i've never completed one but whenever there's been a couple of times where i've turned it off 20 minutes at the most like 20 minutes at the most i'll turn it off and it'll be at zero and i'm like how come it didn't stop so i don't know how long it wants me to stop but after turning it off after doing a static mm. regen it doesn't add any more back pressure it doesn't ever it stays at zero for the rest of the day as long as it's still running yeah. kind of weird right I so guess Laura, have you tried plugging your truck in no because that'll no. stop your soot loading when you're cold a lot it'll really, really? reduce it yeah well oh, wow. your particulate matter when you're cold yeah. your cold start is where you're loading the dpf once the truck's high and your exhaust is hot it's an efficient setup um you know? yeah after after doing one of those regions as long as it's running it will not add anything to now, if, if it's just getting hot, it still will slowly add. But after a regen, it's like the catalyst stays hot. Yes, if you're driving the truck off. or running it, if you keep running yeah. it, it stays it's self, yeah. kind of self-cleaning. You know, it yeah, as long as you keep up. the fire running, as long as yep. you keep yeah. that that. Listen, they're great systems and everything when they're running. If you if you just get, let them cool off all the time, then they're not very efficient. But you know what? You know what's really weird though? It's like when I was plowing, uh, it was it was filling up, it was filling up. But I was running the truck for nine hours straight, nine ten hours sure. straight. Once it filled up and I did the regen, I wasn't driving highway. I was still driving like house to house, and it still stayed zero after that regen. As long as yeah, I didn't you're, turn it off. You're, you're driving it. You don't have an exhaust gas temperature gauge, but if you did, you'd see you're running four to six hundred degrees at the at EGTs, and that's all you need. Yeah. You know when you're driving yeah. the, you know coming from the diesel performance world, EGTs are everything, and um, when you're driving the truck, even if you're not driving it hard, you're still making heat. Oh yeah. That's the system needs heat. You know, it needs everything needs to stay hot. That's hence it is. hence yeah. why we put high idle switch when we're sitting at fucking idle. I mean, yep. it's yep. it's got a purpose and yeah, all, all the big not, trucks have them. All, yeah. all the big trucks have them. You turn the cruise on, you just ramp it up and up they go. Yep. We always try to get our drivers to lean at a minimum of twelve hundred RPM. Yeah, it's know? it's not it's it's like almost for two two purposes. Yep. For that, and obviously, if you're running a PTO, you can't run the PTO at, at idle. I mean, you can, but 
right uh, whatever you're trying to run ain't going to have shit for hydraulic pressure so no you need rpm you need speed exactly so it's the way we always working. sell it to the guys is uh turn on uh, you know hey if you make sure you turn on that uh that high idle make sure you do it and make sure you know it'll get you nice and hot and, oh really okay yeah i'll make sure i do that you know? <laughs> but, yeah, when it's for themselves they care about it but when it's for the truck they don't give two shits you know? our big trucks are programmed to shut off after three minutes if they don't if they don't wrap it up it shuts off after three oh yeah. wow yeah. no kidding a lot of ours are like five five or seven but wow. a lot of our fleets deleted too because it's tow truck so it's considered municipal sure uh, yeah, all our trucks are missile highway trucks. They plow roads and stuff, but we haven't deleted any of them yep. yet. Mo, well, what do you yeah, think? No, waiting for warranty. What do you um, think the percentage of your your fleets are? Do you do you do you have more Fords in them? Do you got more more GMs or? You talking to me? Yeah. Yep. Well, most of our trucks, our, our trucks are all international to max, big stuff. Yeah. Um, cl- class eight, you know, thirty six okay. to forty three thousand GBW. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, Pickup wise, we've got all Chevy and GMC, three quarter and one ton, uh, thirteen trucks and five with plows. They're all nine foot straight fishers because all we do is um, cold sacks with them and small roads. That's it. Um, yeah. I like Are the they Chevy plows. Because of a local dealer that's around you. What? I'm sorry. What was that? Are they Chevys because of a local dealer that's around you? Like a lot of times, well, you know, whatever dealer is local, they'll, they'll cut a deal with them. To, no, it was actually the previous mechanic that was there before me. He had a, he was partial to GM. Mm. And um, okay, I'm, I'm partial to what works. And when I got there, um, the heavy duty trucks, we you understand something. Our pickups, we don't work them that hard. We've got big trucks for that. You know, we've got real dumb trucks yeah. and class eight trucks for the serious work. So we don't more for tight more for tight space transportation service bodies um tow an air compressor around a 185 compressor um our trucks go out and you know like they might be guys flying with them all day long they'll sit at night all day long with the lights on you know um we got one ton dump trucks they'll go out and they'll be have black top scraps in them or some topsoil a yard or two of topsoil but if it's real serious work we get one of the big macs or the internationals you know? oh yeah 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 um that's yeah. what they're there for you know we do right tow, tow for the job. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. We've got a couple of small trailers. We've got, we do tow a skid steer or a mini around with them now. And like I said, we're, we're a town. So we don't even go on the highway ever. Our trucks never leave the town. So they rarely yeah. go above 45 miles an hour. Oh, wow. So we don't use diesel. We just use the GM six liter gas, which is, um, it's a, I can be honest with you, it's not the most powerful engine in the world, but it is rock solid. Oh, yeah. That uh, is, they have uh, nothing, nothing yeah. happens to these yeah. things. They are, oh, yeah. They've been running those for so long. I mean, yep. back. I mean, how long? They've probably been running those since like 2004. 1999. 99. Yeah. 99. Oh. I believe is the first one in heavy duties. Wow. Yeah. Burn a lot of oil, but they're reliable. The, mine don't use any oil. None of them. I We've had. Got, awesome. I had a. We just we just got rid of an O2 last year. I actually gave it to another department, and it had 160,000 on the clock. But you got to understand, Damn. this thing never left the town. So that's and hard it, miles. It, that's the all. hour meter, the hour meter was Engine working. Hours. The hour meter worked. The hour meter had flipped. It flipped at ten thousand, and it was back no to four thousand hours. Wow, fourteen thousand hours. Yeah, that's yep. that's why I bought one of those trucks because I already yep. knew that the six liter was the simplest, most yep. reliable. It only had three hundred foot pounds of torque, three hundred horsepower, but yeah, it gets it some was, work done. So yeah. we, were, we were using them, but now they've um, GM has went away with that engine now and replaced it with a 6.6 liter, which is great, you know, mm-hmm. but they're using the direct fuel injection on it now. So I'm a little concerned about that just because our trucks idle all day long and DFI and idling is not really a good combination. So, uh, I'm they're, not doing, the they're not doing dual injection, are they? No. Nope. Yeah. And um, I, if, they, I, if they were, I'd have more confidence in it, you know. I have found like um, almost in your situation for like uh, since uh, we'll use your your Ford as an example. Sure. The trucks, the EcoBoosts that I see come in uh, that are, you know, driven, you know, real nice, you know, they keep it in the garage and maybe this, you know, older couple, you know, are driving it. Trucks got no problems, but the trucks that are in the fleet that are the EcoBoost, man, I'm telling you, stretch timing change, turbos, uh, water pumps hanging off. Um, it, it, 
it's kind of a weird combination when when yeah. when you see these trucks and how they're taken care of and the ones that obviously don't give two cents about the thing that they're operating and how beat to they are we, um, we, we call we call them a slip seat truck because it's got multiple drivers nobody cares about the truck oh yeah totally totally it's a slip seat truck or an orphan i've yeah. never heard of that before that's funny yeah yeah totally. well, when you assign a driver to a truck they typically take very good care of it but when you have that's a truck, what i was just gonna different say guys use it Mm-hmm. When a guy you know, takes a car, when a guy takes a truck home, they they tend to be way take, more respectful to it and take care of yes. it. Yes, they keep it cleaner. They let you know when something's wrong with it. They mm-hmm. bring it in for service. It gets washed once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> right. They, sure. they have a vested interest in it. You know, they feel like it's yep. you know, theirs and their responsibility. When you have a slip seat yep. truck, they just get no love. You know, that's what we say. You know, he cares about that truck. Mm-mm. And the mechanics, we always the mechanics, we try to look out for those slip seat trucks. We know that they slip through the cracks. Yeah, you know, no one tells you when something's wrong with them, and um, it's just how yeah. it goes. You know, it's part of the game. Yep. It yeah, people don't understand that, that fleet. Yeah, fleet usage is a different. It's extreme. It's really hard on trucks and My, equipment. One of one of the things though for me is when I hear fleets, I think they should be running synthetic oil because they run them so hard. But I think a lot of fleets just run the cheapest, most basic maintenance yeah. as far as fluids. That yeah, they I, I've run, seen both. I've seen both sides of it. Um, Depends use, on the fleet. Yeah, I use full synthetic oil on all our trucks. Um, light duty. Heavy duty, I just use straight up 15W40. Um, basic oil. Rotella. Because, well, here's the thing. Our heavy duty trucks, they're plow trucks. They run one to 3,000 miles a year on a 32 to a 37 quart sump. They run maybe Damn. 150 hours. So I'm changing the oil every year. It's coming out clean half the time. Wow. And the trucks sit inside. There's no extreme temperatures for them. Yeah. They sit, the, 68, they sit 68 degrees in the shop you, all the way you, along. So you talk, are you running Shell Rotilla 15W40? No, actually right now I'm running a Gulf um, Fleet Heavy Duty, which has mm-hmm. been um, about half the price, and everything has been perfect on it. I've had no issues with it. What are your range well, of years of the trucks? Are they uh, older trucks, newer trucks? Well, we've got from 1991 in our fleet. The old DT360 and 466s, the mechanicals. Oh, okay, we, okay. We pull a lever to shut them off. Yeah, yeah. Up to um, our newest trucks, our 2019s. Um, we've got three 2019s, internationals. Uh, one is the new HV cab, and they've all got L9 Cummins in them. Damn. With Allison's uh, 3500s. Um, awesome. I, I kind of like that engine. It's a it's a good engine, and um, one of the trucks has to get left out, and it will cold start very well, unlike a Max Force. Um, the only thing we have had a, a few minor issues with the emission systems on the Cummins, but it's not Cummins' fault. It's the truck. It's the SCR system. It's usually a pump or a def level sensor. You know. Yep. And the problem is, too, these trucks sit. They kind of sit from April until October, November. They don't get run much. They're just plow trucks. They don't. And, sit. you know, sit is the worst thing for a truck. Oh, you know, I know. They just don't get used a lot. And um, I get two of them that are sitting right now. I know. Tell me about it. Right. That's the worst thing for the truck is to have it not be used. I just had to fill my DF up, so I'm definitely using mine. I already yeah. ran through a uh, what, ten gallons? Yeah. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. We're at three thousand miles. Are you using more DF D- D- flu than your oil, Sean? <laughs> Not quite. <I'm> like, <laughs> yeah, you gotta. We got. We, I think we, you're making a big deal out of nothing. Yeah, you didn't get the update on that yet. Oh no. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah. So you, you'll be surprised when you find out what happened. We, uh, in the manual, it tells you, you you're not normal until after 3,000 miles. After 3,000 sure. miles, you're not supposed to burn oil. Before then, you can expect to burn some oil. Yes, you can. But, um, Told you, you didn't see your rings yet. Right. And then what we discovered is the oil dipstick on the 6.7 has changed in 2020. They actually have a, a different part number. When okay. you look in the manual, they... When you fill it with oil, it's supposed to stop. When you put it in the 13 quarts, it doesn't yep. go to the top of the stick. It stops right in the middle. And every oil change I've ever done, and whenever you add the oil, it, it's at the top of the stick. Well, we we haven't uh, confirmed so far, uh, you know, if if in fact side by side each right, stick right. is different it's just we were talking the last podcast and was like you know hey is there is there something wrong 
different with that dipstick. And I immediately went to uh, the parts catalog and, and one of them was an LC3Z 6750 Apple and the other one was an HC3Z. And it's like, okay, well, they got different part numbers. They both are in six sevens. I mean, are they it, it longer? Could, it, it could be as simple as the fact that there's a different intake and maybe there's a different tube to go with the intake, but that's what I was um, going to say. It's every, a different tube. every, every oil change I've ever done when I add the right amount, it would always be right at the top, but on yep. six, seven, they, according to the manual, they tell you right in the middle. When we added 13 quarts, it stopped right in the middle of the dipstick. So we're like, yep. how come it didn't go to the full mark? So, uh, I guess it's not supposed to on the six, seven, on the 20. It's supposed to st just stop in the middle. Yeah. So Before I guess maybe. That, I've, I've been a bit lazy. So why didn't, why didn't mine minutes. do that then? What it, When you added 13 quarts, where did it stop? I mean, where is the. Before I started it? After you started it and let it settle and then checked it. It was right up full. Right at full? Right up full. You guys check on cold on flat ground in the morning before you start it? I'm checking it hot and then letting it sit for 15 minutes. Yeah, that's plenty. 15 minutes is great. Yeah. I've checked it cold, and it's been just a tad above full, just a tad. We're right at the fullest of full, and then run them for at least 15, let them sit and check it. I'll check it right after I let it. I shut it off, and it's up full. And then I let it sit, and it's still up full. Because when he was asking me about that, I was like, yeah, I'll go do it. And I took the pictures, and I was like, yeah, I don't know, man. Mine's up full. I got a, like just like 5,030 miles on mine. I changed the oil once. I changed it to Shell Rotella 540. That's good oil, man. I love it. It's my favorite oil, T6. That email, yeah. Mark, that you sent me was, uh, was a dud. So just to let you know. I blame AT and T. No, you can do Mark, it. Mark, it doesn't burn any of the oil, does it? The T six. <laughs> Say again, John. It doesn't burn any oil, right? That T six. It doesn't burn any of that shell retella, does it? No, that's what I was saying. Mine's up yeah. full, and that's why he said to check. He's like, make sure you check it after you know you run it, and then fifty let it sit for fifteen minutes. Well, just for giggles, I checked it right after I shut it off because. Like he said, it's only going to get more full of the you know the longer it sits. I right. check it right after I shut it off, and it was full. So I check I check it right after I shut it off. I mean that tells me that 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 oil is flowing real well. Oh, yeah. Right, right, yeah, it falls back down quickly, huh? Yeah, and I mean going back to what DS was saying in a different podcast, Project Farm, that dude, like even though the tests are like simplistic. Like, it just really shows, like, what it – like, he's got an industrial freezer, and he'll freeze that stuff to, like, something crazy Celsius. I don't know what that equals in America, but it's cold. And they, the flow difference, so like, on Amsoil or Pennzoil Ultra or whatever kind of oil he's testing, you can just – you can yeah. see it visually. It's synthetic. You can see it visually. And, I mean, even if it's just gravity and it's that quick, imagine what it's going to be like in oil journals and oil valleys. Well – I tell you what, I switched to 5W40 um, Motorcraft full synthetic, yeah. and the truck runs better. Yeah, absolutely, sure. I've yeah. never used I've Definitely never used the 540 better. Motorcraft. I've only because we we sell uh, the shell, um, but my going from the stock oil to that yeah, oil to shell, yeah, uh, I gained. I want to try shell. I gained at least, at least wonder, two miles to the gallon. Uh, all right, so. Shell is still, way better still, than still a lot of like fresh miles on it's not like I said it's only five thousand miles on the engine so I think the little bit more it'll, it'll improve the little further it gets going here breaks in yeah. a little, little bit more. I wonder if there's an improvement going directly from Motorcraft five hundred and forty to Shell Rotella five hundred and forty. I don't know. It'll be a good test. Be I know. I know test. the Shell Rotella T six five hundred and forty is phenomenal oil. I've used it in everything. I use it oh, in my yeah. small air cooled engines that run hot, yeah. and it, they don't use any oil with that in there. I mean, use nothing. I got a 27 horse Kohler on a wood chipper, and that thing runs full bore for hours on end at 3,700 RPMs. I put 540 T6 in that thing; it doesn't burn a drop. None. What do you think? Yeah. What do you think about putting uh, diesel oil in a gas engine? It, in most cases, it's fine. It's not an issue. 
right, isn't it? Certain engines, I, it used uh, to yeah, be an I've, issue. I've done it. Used it used to be an issue with certain engines because they claimed with the older diesel oils that they added a package in it would hurt the catalytic converter in gasoline vehicles. But that has since been rectified years ago because all the newer diesels have diesel oxide and catalyst in them anyway. So those changes were made to the oil formulation. That's not supposed to be an issue anymore. But um, my brother has a scooter. I think it's a Vespa and it recommends 540 Shell Rotella in the manual. Oh, okay. On the scooter itself. Well, I'm, I'm, thinking, oh. I'm thinking about putting it in my lawnmower. I, I, so I'll run it like... all your, your, your zero turns and stuff, your walk behinds. I'd run it yeah. all. Yeah. I run in all my all my lawnmowers and power equipment. It's it's you, you know what's funny that you can run that oil in almost anything. It's actually got the wet clutch added a package in it. You run it in a motorcycle. And you mm, wet your wet I clutch run, uh, ran. I run, run the Rotella ten thirty in my uh seventy eight Corvette because of the high zinc. Yeah, I, I run the, the SAE thirty, the white bottle mm -hmm. in my uh, mm -hmm. old, uh Detroit diesel and Michigan loader. Oh yeah. So get, I'm get, thinking get, about doing a comparison if I take if I take the Shell Rotilla directly and put it compared to the new Motorcraft, if there's any difference that can be noticed as far as MPG, as far as drivability or anything, the way it sounds, cold starting. I know the cold think, pour, uh, the cold pouring is way better on the Rotilla yes. T6. Than I think for it, for it to be a fair test, for it to be a fair test, you'd have to do it in the, try and do it in the same season. So you do both of yeah. them in winter or do both of them in summer. Be a little expensive, but I could just do it now. You know, yeah. be a little pricey though. That's what I was gonna say. Uh, where do you guys? I mean, besides me and PTT, where do you guys get your oil from? Like, where do you get it? You get it from work, John, or? Well, I, it depends. For when I buy it for work, I usually buy it from Advanced Auto Parts. We have a municipal discount there. Uh, if I buy T6, if I buy it for myself, I I'll get it from the auto's owner. From actually, actually, I hate to say it, I get it from Walmart. Walmart, yeah. The cheapest by far. Walmart yeah. is pretty. Walmart and that's is pretty the thing. cheap on Rotella. T6, yeah. Show Rotella T6 is, is not that expensive. No, it's not. It's it's great oil. It really is. And um, yeah, yeah. At work, we have a zero turn 52 inch with a 29 horse Cowie on it, a uh, D8850, I think it's called. And um, I put the Kawasaki oil in it for the first two oil changes for warranty purposes. As soon as I put that T6 in it, it sounded like a different engine. So much quieter, you could just tell it was happier. And yeah. you said the cold well, starting, well, the, the flowability of it's great. You can tell when you crank something and it starts right up, it's quiet from the word go, you know. Yeah. It, it I gotta try that. You can tell by how, how fast it cranks it. when it's cold. You yep. can notice it. Absolutely, yeah, you can feel it. I, I, I've always run in my motor. Going back to, uh, go ahead, DS. I always run uh, 5W30. Or 10W30, I can't remember, but I always ran Mobile One, and I got a lot of hours yes. out of Mobile One. Mm -hmm. But Shell Rotilla T6 might be a step above. Have you any Mobile of you guys one, ever used Schaefer oil? oil? What was that? I do not. Have any of you guys ever used Schaefer's oil? No, but oh, we were talking no. about it yesterday, and I want to. I I want to yeah. check it out. It's pretty good. Um, I want to check it out. I've been running it about 30 years, and I had a salesman really? walk into my job one day and just show up. Gave me some samples. And that was like 30 years ago. And um, I don't run it as much now just because you can't just go to the store and get it. You got to order it. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, their oils are, I mean, I'm not going to say next level, but they're very good. They're excellent. Yeah. They really are. Yeah. And, um, for some reason, the 6 and 6.4 liter diesels really yeah. like their um, X9000 diesel oil. They um, they do well with it. Do you they have know? really good oil. And um, their, their salesman will come right out to you at your shop. And... Um, their pricing yeah. is good if you do a three hundred dollar order. I think at five hundred dollars, it used to be you got three oil samples. Wow! Um, and they're they're pretty okay. serious. I mean, what I liked about Schaefer's was um, you'd send in a couple samples and they'd tell you what to change oil at, and as long as you follow their schedule, they warranty that engine. They don't care how old it was. Wow! If you had an oil related failure, because I called the salesman, I'm like, you know, I usually change oil at hundred hours. It's like we're telling you to go two fifty. If it fails, we'll replace it. We'll pay. Oh for wow! It, you know? So wow. he goes, he goes, listen, I understand. I sell you the oil. So I, I stand to make more money by selling you more oil. I'm telling you to run it longer. Well, you can save a lot of money. Right. Doing that. But You're it's all, it's all based off sampling. You know what I mean? It's not off guesstimates. It's all, yeah. all real-time sampling. You send your sample in, they run the sample. What do you, do you think about, do. what do you think about AMS oil and all their claims and sampling and extended drain intervals? And I think it's, I think it's, I think it's great. And I yeah. think, 
Extended drain intervals are phenomenal. The problem with extended drain intervals are like anything else, it only fits a certain criteria of vehicle. It yeah. fits vehicles that run like taxi service. They run all day, they stay running, they don't cool off. When you've got guys that take short trips, if you want to change rail once a year, that mobile one angle protection or the, that's great. But if you're doing short trips, it's not going to work. You know what right, I mean? You never right. burn the condensation or the fuel off your oil. Right. You got to, if your right, oil right. won't hit 210, here's the thing, you know, if you don't hit 200, 210 degrees with your motor oil, you're not going to burn the fuel off and you're not going to burn the moisture off. So if you go a couple weeks on end or a month on end, you don't get the oil hot. I don't care what kind of oil you run. It's, it's not, it's not going to last, you know, because it's, it's full of contaminants and you're not running into the vehicle hard enough to burn them off, you know? And you got that issue and you got other things too, like EcoBoost and you guys know this. Some of the older EcoBoost especially have fuel issues, the, the fuel dilution issues. Yeah. What good is a, the best oil in the world if you want to change it once a year? If you're at 5% fuel, what good is your oil? All right. Right. So, yeah. So to me, I'd rather just use good oil and change it more often, unless you yeah. know by sampling what you can do. And you know? it's that beneficial for you to save that kind of money. If you're hauling whatever across the country and that's a lot of time that right. you're down getting service maintenance and all that. Right. But other than that, for guys like you and all of us guys, it makes sense to change your oil more often. Oh, yeah. most definitely. You know, yeah. I, I'm terrible. I, I'm so bad over maintenance. I changed my oil on this new truck at 1600 miles. First one. Yeah. 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 I put the Ford motorcraft 5W30 full synthetic in it. I put the motorcraft filter in it and I'll change it probably at 5,000, which will be what? 3,200 miles, 3,400. No, I, I don't I, care. I, to me, oil's cheap. I, I love my truck. I love knowing it's serviced well. And I love knowing that I can get in and turn the key and go anywhere I want to go. Now, this is kind of an, an, uh, off, the soft, uh, off the subject of oil. For everybody who's maintaining their truck and, and changing the oil, what do you do for tire rotations? Are we front to back dudes? Are we crisscrossing them? Are we rotating the sparing? What, depends, what, depends what's your, we're looking. Yeah, what, I, I what just do, you guys do front do? to back. Front to back, okay. That's it. I don't rotate the spare in because usually it's on a different wheel, different size, no word. TPMS sensor. Word, word. You know. You know. Okay. I got okay. a, I got a 450, so I got to go side to side. You know what yeah. I mean? We just did his, yeah, yesterday. We did his first maintenance, uh, um, uh, the first of the year. And, um, Made a pretty, pretty, I mean, he's telling me uh, after watching the footage, it was a pretty detailed uh, video uh, with just everything that we, you know, we did to the, the 450. I definitely, I definitely feel like I learned a lot uh, watching the video that we made. Definitely feel like I learned a lot. Um, it's going to be good to get But that. hey, how come we didn't rotate in? How come we didn't rotate in my spare? I mean, well, it, it ain't that heavy. Yeah, but you're you can't do that on yours for one, and your back dually tires you got outside aluminums and steel inside. Yeah. So I know, but you just have to take off the outside one and then put the one the spare on the inside, and then I don't know what what would your spare? Spe that'd be too much work. <laughs> you got, do you have a steel? That's what, I hate, that's what I hate about mine. I got a full size thirty five inch Goodyear Duratrax sitting under. Yeah, yeah, it's just gonna sit under yeah. there. It's just gonna sit there. Yeah. <laughs> Mark, you like those dirt, gonna... dirt tracks? I absolutely love them. Yeah, I had them. Uh, I had them on my old truck. My old truck was an 03 with a 73, and I love that truck. That was a lariat, and I had them on that truck, and they were they were good for like sixty five thousand. Damn. Kept them rotated and kept them kept them. Yeah. Uh, that, a lot of those highway I didn't trucks. see off road too much. Wow, that's. Uh, were, I mean, there's there's mileage. a reason there's a reason that Chevy, Fiat and ford are going to uh going to carrying all them tires yeah on the, you know on all their their power wagon their tremor their at4 or whatever it is yep there's a reason that they're using that tire yeah we use them on all our town trucks all the late duty, every single one of them and um we get them on state bed luckily oh yeah what do you think yeah. a good tire is for the 450 commercial uh snow or yeah, i don't know we don't have it would look, any, it would look pretty, it would look pretty sweet trucks. with them good rear wranglers on it damn hell yeah <laughs> it would look pretty figure out how out. man i don't know so i don't know how to get them on there <laughs> they would yeah but the, I, I i got 10 lugs that's the problem i got 10 lugs i gotta figure out how to i think they're do they come in 20s 
They're like a load range E. Yeah, I'm sure you can get them in twenty. I don't know that for a fact. If I got a different, if I got a, if I got a different rim, I can get them on a twenty inch rim with a. I can order like a custom ten lug rim, and that way. Yeah. I don't know if you can. I don't know if you can dually mount see, those. So, uh, I don't know if you can dually. so what I was gonna say, going back, uh, like my work is an Amsoil dealer, and we sell a lot of Amsoil. And our closest distributor is out of Cincinnati. That's their. What do you think about it? What, what do you think about Amsoil like products? So we use it in a lot of the fleets. They've been building a gas line. Uh, they built an Amazon uh, fulfillment center by us. They actually built two of them by us. So they've been building a lot of stuff for that and then just expansion for the city in general. And one of them, I mean, is just the national like gas line project. So we've been seeing a lot of pipe fitters. And they all have just the flatbed welding, like yeah. dually diesel, you know, they're, yeah. they're all like muddy as shit. And like, yeah. They're all the same, right? And we run it and all that. Them guys like that stuff. And if they stay in town long enough to where I see their truck again, um, I don't see any issues with it. I don't see any. I mean, it's blacker than all hell just from sitting there idling, but it's a synthetic. So it's supposed to hold that carbon in the oil. That way it goes with it when you strain it. So, I mean, it's, it's a good oil. I mean, and then we sell Holy. we sell it to regular customers too. We sell it to landscaping fleets. We sell it to. Just Only everybody. thing about the AMS oil is it's a little pricey. For example, uh, Arod got me done for one seventy five. We went with the Motocraft to get the AMS oil. I got to pay like one eighty for the whole thing, and I got to do it myself. So it's like, it's probably that the best a, oil with a filter. That's with the filter and the oil and being a preferred whatever. Would you still use an AMS oil filter or would you use a motorcraft filter? Still? I would if if I were um gonna go if I were gonna use the AMS oil, I would use the AMS oil filter. Yeah. Because uh, I think I would just I just cut one open. They're they're real good filters. They have uh, synthetic media. They have a smaller micron filtration. And uh, what's the micron rating? Do you know? I want to say, don't quote me, zero point nine. But I don't remember. It's I just remember it was that's, pretty good. That's super. That's super fine. Maybe usually I'm missing. Like, maybe I'm maybe usually, I'm wrong. Usually they're like three micron or like five micron is like kind of like standard. Hey Rod, do you got your computer? Some What's the micron some filtration? Of them, on some of them are like on an AMS oil. On an AMS oil. Uh, oil it does. Filter. I mean, it does. It. It's not that big. Of a I can't deal. remember. I might be thinking about their bypass filter. And when you're talking full flow filters, you don't want less microns because when that oil is cold, you're going to have a restriction problem. Right. That's what we're going to get. Right. I don't that's remember. I don't remember what you don't it want was. To blow your, you don't want to blow your pressure valve and just have that thing bypass it. 20 microns. Oh, okay. 20 microns for the oil filter. I'm sorry. I think yeah, they're. The bypass I think, filters are one micron. Yeah. The bypass would have been the other one. Yeah. But um, it's cool. They were advertising that they were better than Shell Rotella T6 because at 200 hours, they're better than. Because Shell apparently falls apart after 200 hours and they don't. But I'm like, who's running their oil more than 200 hours? You'd be surprised. Yeah, you you would. I see it every, <laughs> every day. They come in with whole every day. Side of the blocks and six, seven hundred hours, eight hundred hours, thousand hours on, a, on one oil, oil those, on one oil That's chain. What I was with yep. those, uh, oh my goodness! I've seen I've seen forty thousand miles on a car because she said. Well, the car didn't tell me to get an oil change. My old car told me when to get an oil change. Like Forty thousand miles. We have oh a, my God. a uh, <sighs> we have a um, armored. And that's truck why I was service. going back to. Uh, oh, go ahead. go ahead. We have armored truck service in this area, and they they're six fifty seven fifty. Uh, you know, big boys. Yeah, talking about idle hours. They don't change the oil. We replace the engine every forty thousand miles. Why? Some trucks got okay. three, four, five engines in them. <laughs> why? You tell they me why. No I have no they idea. Just don't want it. Because some dipshit pencil pusher thinks it's a good idea at that company. <laughs> hey, you know what? That's damn good for a 6.8 <laughs> liter Ford engine to go 40,000 miles on one oil change. That's Those damn good. Those are seven aren't they? That's not to course. mention that. Is that the first? That's not just one oil change. That's the first oil change. That's the like only the oil change. Come the only oil, oil change. filter that came on Dude. the motor that he put in. 
Yep. Dude, yeah. that's insane. Coming in on a hook. So you're telling me like motor in. The, they don't they don't change oil. The break in engine. the break in oil. Nope. The break in oil still in the it. Break in oil is just... what breaks it. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that Do they at least insane. add oil? Or they just wait for it to lock up. Just come in locked up. <laughs> Take that the valve cover off all the rollers. For, rockers. They're paying for a tow and everything. All is it like no tow? There's not. There's not cheap. like long block time. Is there like too much armor? Like what the heck? What the heck's going on? There's too much armor for them. I have no like idea. Like you can still get to the drain plug. That's like uh, maybe that's how you reasons, get the money. The, the ACs, the AC systems won't work, or something happens. I don't know if like the fixed orifice tube gets plugged or the low pressure cutoff switch doesn't work, but they don't figure out the problem and they just wire the AC on all the time, right to right to battery. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah. So when the AC takes a shit <laughs> and you have to replace the whole entire system, it's like oh. So there's no cutout on the compressor. Man. The keep, compressor keeps running, whether the high side's too high or the low side's too low, it keeps running. They go right around that motherfucker. Oh my! All goodness. the pressure switches are taken out of the equation. That's nice. Yeah, they just run the clutch, just <laughs> locked it, locked it to power. So when it goes, it goes big time. So who knows? When if you even shut the key off, that compressor could still be just provided power, just waiting. Come on, just spin yeah. me up, baby. Come on, just spin me, spin me, spin me. But yeah, <laughs> can't make who this knows? stuff up. Yeah, it's uh the the things that we see come in. Um, even since uh, it's it's going to be a video coming up uh, real quick, the the ten year anniversary for the six seven is going to be coming up. Uh, actually, this year I don't uh, uh, know what time of the year it is, but I've already started doing some research about and and compiled compiled some some footage. Um, but for for that engine and how I think the trucks that I see come in and how the people take care of them. You know, the 6.7, when uh, John had brought up in the beginning about, you know, the 6.0, that is my second favorite engine uh, with uh, right behind the 6.7. And and I think of, of all the, the repairs I've done and all the hardships and just headaches I've had, the 6.7 still comes back to me and is one of my favorite engines to work on. Right now, I got DS. Um, he took my... Um, uh, knowledge, my experience, my suggestions, and he's got himself a six seven. I've never met Mark before. I met him on the internet, and and he has got him six seven, and we're kind of on the same page. DS and and myself yeah. and and the other guys you see come on the channel and, and comment. It is really a phenomenal engine, and, and it, even with with John's gas job, uh, it being an EcoBoost, you really have to change the oil or at least maintain it or or you know just the stupid stuff that we see come in it, all this stuff can be prevented and i just wish people i talked about it in the last yeah. the last podcast check check that owner's manual that came in your glove box it's this thick when you're taking a dump get your owner's manual read it it's got some great info in it maybe you didn't even know how to turn or deactivate your seatbelt light did you know that was in there? Check it out. Oh, dude, that is so look that it up. Is so cool. I took care of that yeah. before. Yeah, scan. We did look it up. <laughs> I mean, well, a Rod, a Rod did this thing where he like clicks the seatbelt three times. He like gets in, sits down, clicks it three times, and then it's like, oh, no more of that. It will not beep anymore. Nice. Yeah, I did it with four scan. Yeah, yeah. I, I love. On, man. I like four scan. We're gonna. We're gonna do a video on that. This is actually my dongle that I use. Nice. Um, I am, uh, or it recognizes this pass-through device. It's what I use uh, with IDS and Forescan when I hook up to all these, uh, well, to any vehicle uh, that I work on. Um, but just the stuff we can't do that with with the scan tool um, program that I have at work, or that I use for Fords, and and to go in and change all this stuff. And you got Bambi mode, and you got now you got a heated steering wheel, and now you got you know different lighting and chimes, and like, dude, that's so cool. Yep. Yeah. To get this free, a free, you know, subscription, and then you know they get you if you got to buy the dongle or whatever, you know, for thirty bucks or yeah, you know, in my case, I got this, but big deal. It's um, uh, I mean, that's cool to to actually make it fine tune it to you, you know, you're not just a normal 
F-350 driving down the road because you've got some, you know, special things done to it that is stock. You didn't add no extra wiring. You didn't add no special relay box. And, you know, it's, it's, right. you're all using that stuff that was in the truck. So I'm real yeah. big on that as, as far as, um, you know, doing modifications and, you know, the, the third brake light or the third brake light, the third running rear light that the dualies have i put on the srws um i got, got radiant, one. radiant engine water lights i like those yeah they're it's nice. um they're uh i love oe stuff the modifications to the stuff that i see come in and people got these things uh what do you call them for the house stuff i'm not bob vila uh wire nuts you don't wire nut automotive stuff you don't wire nut stuff, stuff. In- come on it's underneath the vehicle going to the brake lights people come on there's got to be some better thinking and thought process going on uh when we're doing this kind of stuff all the time oh yeah all the time (laughs) (laughs) that's funny i got i got a question uh i guess for either one of you but i know Sean has the same door handles I do. Do your door handles cry? Does it look oh, like your, your doors are crying? Yeah, that is so funny. <laughs> mine do. Mine do. No, mine don't. Yeah, sure we, they don't? I don't think they're crying. Well, his so, is silver, so it'll probably be a little oh, harder to fine. see. Yeah, but like, if ours yeah, gets that. wet, it'll yeah. just look all. Maybe even yours have, too, uh, John. Like when it's red. Yeah, and like I was if you, say, John, what about you? Do, yeah. do you see? Do you see like a? A water line like underneath your door handles like you know i don't but i see it under my mirrors uh, what you see it where under my mirrors oh yeah i got the mirror one too yeah i, I don't the have the door one handle too, ones yeah. but i got the mirrors on both sides i got the mirror shit stain yeah and i my my truck's uh, ceramic paint coated so it's kind of easy to clean off but it's still noticeable yeah and, i mean it's just it's blue jeans metallic and it looks good when it's clean, but then you step away and you see that, and it's just like, it's like, what is wrong? It looks like somebody <laughs> just sprayed your handles with PB Blaster and just like walked away. What you know is to, this? You know how to fix it permanently? Left the stream. What's that? You know how to fix it permanently? What? Buy silver. Lambo you don't have to worry about nothing. <laughs> True that. Oh. Tesla you know, silver, they... silver might not be the coolest <laughs> color. Like people. This one, some people even say like that's an old man color, like that's silver. That's an old man color. But I'm telling you what, it stays, it stays clean, man. Silver looks clean. great, especially with the silver and black accents, tinted windows, and oh yeah, I like silver. Yeah, silver. Your color. tire, tire, tire shine on the wheels, and everything. And tires looks. Great. Oh yeah, yeah. Silver is a great looking truck, like you said, very clean looking. Yeah, but I think the younger generation want a harder color, like black or magnetic or. You know those those dark grays. I think uh, black that's is really, so hard to keep clean, man. It's so hard to keep. Yeah, clean. Oh. Black you're telling really me. Clean. You're telling me. Yeah. You're telling but me. They look so good. That's the reason I wanted one. As soon as you showed me your Super Duty, the black, I I had to have one. As soon as you Gorgeous. showed me your your ultimate. Yeah. I, I couldn't uh, help it. I like it. It is hard to keep clean, and I I had never um, been to the car wash because I've always washed my own stuff. But I already have a garage queen here that I don't have to worry about, or I can take that regimen. This is my daily driver. It is what it is. I'm over it. I take it to the car wash. I got a monthly subscription, it's 15 bucks uh, for unlimited. I don't, I, 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 I don't care. I don't want scratches down it, but I'm not for the time I have in my life. And I guess, I mean, the truck means a lot to me, but it's just a truck. I'm over it. I have those feelings for this. I don't need to have those feelings for two trucks. It, I, I, I I'm going through the car wash. I'm over I do the same it. thing. I got a monthly on mine too. I'm over it. Now, hold on. Now, okay. So, in I, I'm assuming all car washes are going to have it. There's a a good, better, and best. Yeah. Which one did oh. you get? Well, there's four car stages. Of my house. I got don't the offer a monthly package. You got the what? I got the I got the next one from the top because okay, the, okay. The first one that has the underbody wash. Yeah. 
And I want that with the salt in the winter. Oh, for sure, for sure. I got the the lowest four thirty gears. The uh, <laughs> four thirty gears. Four thirty gears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the gentleman was actually kind of uh, helpful when he was. Um, I had called the car wash prior to me going. You know, I was like, "Can you guys do F three fifties? You know, do you even do trucks?" And you know, he was uh, you know yeah. very helpful, <laughs> and um, you know had asked me, you know, do I have a tonneau cover? Um, I said no, and he had uh, made a suggestion that I get the lowest one because if I were to get the highest one, all that soap and all the extra bullshit that they you know give you uh, once you get down to the dryer yeah it blows the shit all over the truck and he's like if you're going to be coming here in the winter all that stuff's going to be blown on the side of the truck and then you don't want to be driving around with the soap and da, da, da. i'm like well thanks dude i appreciate that thanks for not upselling me on that you know i'm yeah. i i'm gonna come down here right now i'm gonna come through your facility yeah. and check it out you know give it a you know pay the seven dollars a time but you know check it out for the first time i mean and- i mean why only fifteen dollars a month that's so cheap like i that's like it costs more to, for me. I gotta wash my own truck. Ryan, what was yours? Isn't yours the same? No, I got the twenty-five. Oh, the you. Next oh, okay. Yeah, okay. next one up. Oh, I okay. think they treat those like gym memberships, though. Where they think that you'll get it, and it just goes on your credit card, and then you just keep, you know. Yep. Oh yeah. You keep going, like you Even. know, you maybe go once a month, or you yeah. forget about it. Uh, that's why they go so cheap with that stuff. Well, does the oh, twenty-five dollar yeah. one? Does that one shoot the pink the pink shit all over? Yeah, and I don't really have a problem with it in the bed. Really? Yeah, but Ashley's her uh, my wife's F one fifty. It'll be loaded. The bed will be full of it. I Did don't she know have why. The twenty five dollar one? No, she actually has the cheaper one. Get out of here for real? Yeah, and she gets soap all in the bed. I mean, it'll be uh, yep, and especially uh, in the winter, it'll freeze up. Now, do you don't have a bed liner though? Do you? Or is it plastic or do you just have the bed? I have the plastic bed liner. Do you? Yep. Hmm. Interesting. I'll have to check that out. I don't know. One doesn't fit into a car wash. Oh, really? It's too tall. Oh. Yeah. You got to find the right at one. At least in my town. Yeah. But we, right yeah, we only have two car washes uh, that are automated. And they don't even offer monthly uh, subscriptions. Wow. But my, the, the clearance on them is super low. It's like, I forget. It's like seven something. I think it's they do that on purpose. So they don't, because they don't want big ass shit in there. But I do I do it at home. With that being said, I don't wash it as much as I should. <laughs> well, I was doing it in the summer uh, when it was nice out. Yeah. I actually would like to make a video on that um, coming up here. And when the weather changes, I, I went and bought this Ryobi uh, power washer. Um, real, real nice. Um, nice. I got the uh, a foam cannon. Um and nice. it just kind of that's that's what i was showing you earlier yeah it uh mm-hmm. i mean it's it's cool um you know when it's nice and you know you're working you know outside at the, you know at the house or something but you know just in the winter Not you know you got to spray your stuff off just like thing. john was saying or at least the underbody and get that salt and shit that just drives me crazy and you're not going to be you're not doing that outside in the winter in michigan or new jersey new york or anything on the east coast this winter it freaking sucks being in the rust belt and yep, like Ohio. we were just under ds's truck ds look at me when i'm talking to you look at him look at him look at him look at him smirk listen, listen. this shit it's under a half an hour looks it's a half so an hour. bad it's a half an hour drive in the rain on the salty highway what do you expect Oh I my god! Have, as soon as I clean underneath my truck, it's dirty again. <laughs> I know, I know, but it, it should look bad, dude. Every time second. I go, every time I go see him, it's an hour one way. <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna be clean, dude. It's gonna I be know, all crusty. That and it was like I was, I was underneath there spraying too. After wow, were you? Yeah, dude. That that salt was all up in the oil filter. <laughs> oh, did anything stain back down, or was it pretty clean? I don't know. I, I I sprayed it off at the car wash. I don't oh, okay, okay. It's just is uh, your truck undercoated, or both your guys' trucks undercoated? Mine is. John, no, no. no. I have touched the frame up with uh, more black paint, mm. just because uh, even when it was delivered new, and the rear ends on both my trucks, my seventeen and my twenty, the rear axles were not painted. 
the rear axles were not right. Rust, rusted up. Really? Real you know, quick. They had yeah, right no over coating, no nothing. Yeah, so I used the rust only in primer oh, and paint what? on both of them. Yep, no nothing. Coating. Bare. Drive shafts are the same way. Yep, the front drive shaft was horrible. The rear drive yeah. shaft, the oak where it mounts the rear axle was just all rusted up. No same kidding. thing. Yep. That's the first. Yeah. That's I think that's one of the most important things you can do to a vehicle, especially well, not even if you're going to keep it for resale too. Yeah. I went and got mine. I, I got the windows tinted, ceramic paint coated, undercoated, and rust proofed, like where they take out all the body plugs and spray underneath the hood and all that stuff too, and then the rockers. And it was all. It was like 800 bucks for all that. It was a good deal. I had a deal. lifetime warranty too because it was a new truck when I did it. The only stipulation is you got to bring it back to them once a year so yep. they can touch up the undercoat and the rust. Yep. Thing. I got a lot of flack when me? I did that. I, I had, you know, I talked about that to my, you know, what I did to my truck and, you know, I got it undercoated and a lot of these guys were like, you know, hey, why would you get undercoated? Da, 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 and that's the worst thing. And, and South Bend Auto did a video. Oh, and, it's not, it's, and this, it's not the other. Uh, it's not the undercoat that they're thinking of. They're thinking of a specific undercoat that's like that rubbery, Ugh. that doesn't really stick that well, that peels off. Well, the thing not, about it. You're not undercoating over something that's already rusted. You're undercoating something that's brand new. So. They did. And I'm yeah. like, how can you even justify putting undercoating on this truck that's already got cancer? Like, yeah. Huh? That like is counterintuitive. Yeah, what, mean, what does that even do? We, yeah. we as the viewers don't know the whole history of that vehicle and what's happened. And if the undercoat caused that, he's like, look what this undercoat did. It's yeah. Chipping at it. And it's like, yeah. When you that's look a- at my truck and you look at Mark's truck, it does not look like that. I would highly, 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 anybody who lives in the Rust Belt, spend the 350 bucks. You don't have to get go the full yeah. jizz like Mark did and get the the rust proofing. I didn't. I just got the underbody. But at least get yeah, some sort of the full jizz. Protect- well, the the body's aluminum, so I don't know if it if it needs that rust proofing on the doors and I all that. Because I don't think they'll rust. It. Aluminum can, can still oxidize. It, it can corrode. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, it'll still. Yeah. As soon as you get, uh, yeah, so I'm curious to see how that's going to play out. I haven't seen any of any rust on these yet, but they're still new. Well, that would be a, a great topic. Now, I will uh, say, I will say, we've had to do my backup camera, and like they took out the latch, like the plugs and everything. Like I said, so like my whole inside of my tailgate is coated, and I hauled a lot of wood with that when I first got it, and there was definitely still some wood chips, like. I don't want to say stuck in there, but like in the tailgate, like just suspended like in the middle because it was like sticking to that oil, which I don't know, a good and a bad, I guess. Yeah. Like in between the tailgate too, like how the it's hell all, did it get it's there? All it looked like you had been taking a chainsaw. Well, that point, it's like an oil that like dries. So it looks like, it looks like wax that has like a melted, but like a thin, a thin mm. wax. I don't want to say it's like a hot. It's like a hot oil, basically that oh. that dries, and it's not as sticky. But the amount of stuff every- that was inside of my tailgate, just wood chips, was crazy. Yeah, that was a lot. And I had only we only we had only made like we had only made like three runs, and it's not but like it I keeps- was cutting wood like by the truck to where it was going in there. It was just from driving, and just like wood chips just blowing. And it was like, man, how did this even get in between here? Brand new truck. But it keeps your axles oh, looking black. Like your axles don't look all rusty or ashy. They just look black. Oh, dude, they, they look like my bed liner, my Ford Tough Spray and Bed Liner. The whole wow. underside of my truck looks like that. Wow. Damn. Is it, is, is it dry or is it sticky that. and wet? It's Mark? dry. Dry. It nice. doesn't look wet either. Good. It's not, it doesn't have a sheen to it. Yeah, mine's. I went to TSP. TST is who I went to. And it's, yeah, A-Rod, A-Rod looks good, too. It's, uh, it's not did they wet. Paint, it's uh, not... Did they cover the coolers and stuff? I got a bunch of coolers under mine. Did they right? what? Of... Did they cover up the, like, whatever transmission coolers or whatever those are? I don't know what they they are. Like, I got a cooler on my differential. I got a cooler on all, all kinds of different coolers. You mean you have like a differential cover that has fins? Yeah. 
Just little. Yeah. I guess they yeah, wouldn't I mean, cover that. Like heat sinks, I guess. No, they would. They would probably just cover right over that. I mean, like I was like my my drive shaft was real rusty when I got my truck, and I was telling you guys the other day, like my truck was shipped to me, like pretty much special, like right off the manufacturer lot, and it still had rust on the drive shaft when I got it. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean that stuff. It corrodes. It, it it corrodes quick, and it's, that's that's the best thing to do is cover it up. That rust belt, baby. Have a chance to do anything. That rust belt. Tell we, they don't even use salt where I live anymore. They give up on salt. I think they just use straight brine, just sodium chloride, just spraying it down heavy. Wow. Real heavy. Nasty. Uh, it's Nasty. not even. Not even if we're expecting freezing rain. Like if we're getting half an inch, it doesn't matter. Like they're they're spraying it hard. Yuck. Well, I think that uh, that might be a good cutoff. We got uh, some good discussion tonight. Um, we might go over the comments from a uh, podcast maybe 10 next time. We got a lot of good stuff we're talking about in that one. Um, big thank you for John for joining us. Uh, we'd like to have you thank back. Thank you for having me. Uh, good having you on tonight at short notice. I'm glad it worked out. Yeah, for nice to meet you, John. Uh, yeah, Mark, pleasure. Mark, same for you. Um, again, make sure to reach out to us. I'm going to leave my email right above me. I'm going to leave all of our social medias uh, up on the screen. And if you got questions for us, reach out to us. Um, we'll be returning uh, maybe with the same members again, and uh, we can ask answer those questions for you uh, regarding uh, whatever you want to talk about. This is the Power Stroke Podcast. We're talking about trucks. We're talking about Fords and how they affect our lives and uh, what we got to do to keep them on the road. So thanks so much. Drop us a like years, guys. and uh, tell us what you think about that in the comment section. 430 Gears. 430 Gears, baby. <laughs>